No one will be that eternal priestly bride, but she who has made herself ready. For the battle is raging, the devil is raging. I don't want to be sleeping while the battle is I'd like to start this podcast with um, the unveiling. I wrote a book on that some time ago, since 2009, and we're now in 2015. And it has sat in my archives um, for quite a while. And I just have gotten a green light to go forward and release this revelation because we're moving into a completely different time than we've ever known before. It's like going to another planet. We're not going to recognize how things work, um, what decisions are best to be made. So I want to release, I desire to release to you some keys First of all, I want to tell of an experience that I had uh, just maybe a month ago now. This is January 2015. I was asleep when suddenly I saw Jesus talking to a young man, giving him instructions. Uh, I saw the Gentile school and I saw the Jew school, Jewish school, uh, I knew the Jewish school was teaching about God and the Gentile school was teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were both seeking and searching. And Jesus whispered something to the man as a message to both of these people, groups, and the young man started to go toward uh, the two schools that housed both schools of thought to give the message that Jesus had just given him. When suddenly Jesus just put his hand on the young man's shoulder to stop him, as if to say, not yet, I have something else to share. And as that happened, suddenly in the spirit, I was brought close. I'd been standing at a small distance, and suddenly I was standing right in front of Jesus and next to the young man, Jesus took his wristwatch, which was a natural, normal-looking watch, and he twisted it around to where it went from face up to face down, back to face up again in a complete circle. I also saw uh, a pile of dirt that um, someone was trying to ardently and sweep up and every time he'd get it swept up another pile of dirt would uh, fall right down again and he'd have to start again I began to weep and cry in the dream because I knew what a task seemingly endless task that this was Um, the Lord let me know through that dream that the time that we've lived in for thousands of years have come to an end and we're entering into a new age and a new season on God's time clock and it would not look or be anything like what we were uh, used to and so from there I began to um, recall some of the things that he had told me in my book um, about the unveiling or I called it the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, I would like to share some of that with my podcast listeners. This is our first podcast, and um, I really feel that this information is pertinent to everyone listening, if you're interested in going on for God. Uh, I went through a very difficult time I had a uh, time period. I've always had uh, different trials, just like anyone else. 
Um, some were horrific. I lost my daughter who died with cystic fibrosis when she was 21 years old. She was a young mother. And um, I went through uh, a lot of physical things. and But I went through this time of illness where I had chronic insomnia that lasted for about 30 years. It wasn't emotional. Uh, it was totally physical uh, and yet totally spiritual. But during the worst of it, uh, God began to intervene to help me to understand what he was trying to give me. Now, we need to we need to know that when we go through situations and we belong to the Lord that nothing comes through his hand without his permission. When things happen to you but yet you're surrendered to the will of God, then they must go through his hand before you experience it. So we must always be careful to walk in His will and in His way and be tied to the hip, as it were, with our Lord and Savior. One night, while I was going through this sleep deprivation, He spoke to me and said, This sleep fast, it's funny He called it a fast, uh, is a cramming session. He said, all you've ever understood is a point of reference for this experience you're now entering. It's all been theory to you until now. He began to tell me that after all the years of learning that those building blocks are now in place so that I can, so that he can fill the internal part of the building that he was doing inside of me with furniture of experience. I understood what he meant because I've taught Song of Solomon for over 25 years. And one of the concepts that I teach is that something you're going through is just theory to you until you experience it. Once you've experienced it, it becomes branded on your spirit and it's no longer theory but experience and that's what the Lord was relating to me through this trial and he told me that everything is now in place for the next step he said I am positioning your heart to climb over every obstacle to your longing heart reaches my full embrace this longing must exceed the very nature of the flesh, breaking every cry of the body until the spirit is no longer captive to the body of this death. He told me this fast, this sleep fast will end, but its sacrifice will continue. And then he said to me something that really wasn't to me particularly as much as to the body. Everything I have found that I've gone through are lessons for others. Uh, when he speaks to me sometimes about losing my first love or any other thing, he's really not always talking directly to me or referencing me as much as those that I'm to teach. But see, as a teacher, I have to experience these things in order to really fully teach them. Um, and then then he said this, which uh, is for you and all of you that are listening. He says to you, Do you hear me, my beloved? What is more important? Is it your sleep, your food, your warmth, your earthly companions, your natural securities, or me? My sounding trumpet is not only the call for the end of all emptiness and the beginning of the era of fullness, but it is my scream, my roar, and my last bursting call for you to come up hither. Be with me now, not later, now. 
When the body no longer controls you, then I can. Fullness, fullness, fullness. Who are you? Are you tall, skinny, dark, light, young, old, talented, plain? No, the flesh that once proclaimed to the world your significance will no longer describe you. You are proclaimed from the throne room to all existence and pre-existence. Yes, proclaimed, maintained, and sustained by the word of my mouth. When you see death as desirable because it means freedom, you have reached Mount Zion. Now I have to tell you here, he's not referring to the death of the body, but the death to our will our mind, our emotion, pow- the willpower that tries to overrule his authority. Because the Bible says to live is Christ and to die is gain. So to live is crucifixion and to God- die is resurrection. To conform is crucifixion. To be transformed is resurrection. The beauty of the cross is the relief of surrender to death, to the death of your own will and your own way, and in that will find the full love of the Father. Nothing in you can now block the full flow of his outpoured heart. Now the first commandment can take its rightful place. Many of you have asked me to force the issue to do for you what you could not do for yourself. And then he said this, You are now at Gethsemane. Next will come Calvary. You see, we find Gethsemane many times to be the ultimate desperation. And it is to that point. But something much more final is on its way. And it's Calvary. It's where we finally lay it down at his feet. And then we can come to experience the heavenly. He said, I'll take you where you want to go, but could not find on your own. Well, you know, that day will be a Sabbath for us, a day of rest. And um, I'm looking forward to the time that we can fully walk over you know in John 7 21 through 24 Jesus healed a man and the Pharisees were not very happy about him healing on the Sabbath and they point out the Sabbath law which teaches that no one was to do anything on that day that everything was suspended But circumcision was a different law because on the eighth day, every boy, baby, had to be circumcised, whether it was Sabbath or not Sabbath. So Jesus rightly corrected them and asked them, well, if you can suspend the Sabbath for circumcision, that someone has to be brought to a place where part of the flesh is torn away, then why on the Sabbath can't a man be made whole? Well, the revelation I got from that is that the Sabbath represents the whole plan of God, both the death of sin, which was the circumcision, and the restoration of all things, which is the time that we come into peace and rest in his will. And we're no longer fighting his will, but we're surrendered to it, knowing that beyond that uh, obedience, we can walk into a new day. See, at the end of the earth's seventh day, which we're coming to right now, which I believe the watch that Jesus had was representing that, all things will be restored. And Ephesians 1.10 explains that the day will come when he would gather all things unto himself, the circumcised will enter their day of rest and fullness. In the creation, wonderful things beyond our understanding took place. 
I try to imagine what it would have been like to stand in the midst of eternity and watch everything come from nothing to what it is today. That had to be the most awe-inspiring sight that any creature could ever behold. For a moment, I got a very small glimpse of the one second of time that God created all that we know in existence. When I began to see that, he let me know that this great beginning would pale in comparison. And I want you to hear this because we are on the very verge right now, beloved, of this new day and this new season. Now, it's going to come and go and some people are just going to know chaos. They're not going to know that this is a time for your spirituality to reach its uh, highest level. But um, he let me know that the beginning, when he created all things, and imagine standing there on the expanse of time, on the expanse of time, seeing the very nothingness turn into living things, sun, moon, stars, planets, universes, all by his word. He said that that would pale in comparison to the last great event that all of the created order has been anticipating. Before the first word of our known created order was ever spoken, God was already in great joy over what would be born at the last stage of the fullness of time. See, he wrote the end from the beginning. He wrote the end of the book before he even began the work. And he was in great joy over what would happen in this last hour that you and I are now living in. He explained to me that the creation was a seed and what is coming from that seed of creation that he began so long ago is the great event that God had in mind when he created the seed to begin with. Now I want you to think about that. When you plant a seed, you must imagine all that's in that seed. Uh, my husband farms, and it never ceases to amaze me to see this little tiny, tiny seed, almost like a, a, a flake of something very small, turn into this beautiful, dynamic plant, but it's all in the DNA of that seed. And I don't know anything about seed, and I wouldn't know one seed from another, so I would have no idea what that seed would become until it actually grew. On the other hand, someone who was well trained in those things would know more or less what kind of seed it was. Oh Lord, only you can look at the small seed you call creation. Small to you, Lord, because what is coming far exceeds the creation. And only you would know what it would contain. Lord, show us that seed. Show us what it contains. Let us walk into this new day. Not looking at the things that surround us and the dynamics of the chaos and the confusion and the earthquakes and the deaths and all the horrible things, the horrific things that are coming upon the world. But let us see that the end game is in sight with you. And it's going to be a beautiful day for those who lay down the flesh and walk in your spirit. Everyone listening to this podcast today, Father, I pray that you give them a vision of what day we're moving into, this third day or this seventh day, where we rest from our works and we take up yours and we finish the job that you began when you said it is good. Join us next time as we continue our understanding of the new day that we are now entering into. You don't want to miss it. It's a word from God for this generation. God bless you. Until the next podcast, see you then. This podcast has been a production of Brenda Price Ministries. Evangelist Brenda Price has more materials available on this subject, including her most recent book titled The Eternal Unveiling. It can be found at our website, along with other resources we have made available. The website can be found at brendapriceministries.weebly.com.